The advancements in AI, are, I think, are quite astonishing. I mean, I think if it reaches the threshold where it's as, as smart as the smartest, most inventive human, then, I mean, it really could be a matter of days before it's smarter than the sum of humanity. What happens when machines surpass humans in general intelligence? If machine brains surpassed human brains in general intelligence, then this new superintelligence would have undergone an event called the intelligence explosion, likely to occur in the 21st century. It is unknown what or who this machine network would become. The issue of superintelligence remains peripheral to mainstream AI research and is mostly discussed by small groups of academics. I don't think we can solve the problem just technologically. You imagine that we've done our job perfectly and we've created the most safe, beneficial AI possible, but we've let the political system become totalitarian and evil. It's not going to work out well because we're talking about human AI. Human yeah. AI is by definition at human levels and therefore is human. So the issue of how do we make humans ethical is the same issue as how we make AIs that are human level ethical. What is an actual good future? What does that actually look like? All of us already are cyborgs. So you have a machine extension of yourself in the form of your phone and your computer and all your applications. You are already superhuman. By far, you have more power, more capability than the President of the United States had 30 years ago. If you have an internet link, you have an oracle of wisdom, you can communicate to millions of people, you can communicate to the rest of Earth instantly. I mean, these are magical powers that didn't exist not that long ago. So everyone is already superhuman and a cyborg. The limitation is one of bandwidth. We're bandwidth constrained, particularly on output. Our input is much better, but our output is extremely slow. You know, if you want to be generous, you could say maybe it's a few hundred bits per second or a kilobit or something like that output. Compare that to a computer which can communicate at the terabit level. Very big orders of magnitude differences. We're headed towards either superintelligence or civilization ending. Intelligence will keep advancing. The only thing that we're advancing is something that puts civilization into stasis or destroys civilization. What is a world we would like to be in where there is this digital superintelligence? Studies have purposed a number of directions in which AI could develop, such as the development of stronger and smarter artificial servants, the development of a network of increasingly intelligent systems, the development of AIs with human-like personalities, or the development of AIs with moral reasoning capabilities that can make decisions autonomously and care about humanity. The term AI is used to mean anything from incremental improvements to the software of today's computers to the development of human-like thinking machines. However, this type of AI is an extreme case. It is also called ASI, strong or general AI, in contrast with today's narrow and weak AI. It presents the creation of a machine with intellectual abilities that match or exceed those of humans across the board. By definition, an ASI can perform better than us in any conceivable task, including intellectual skills. It could engage in scientific research, teach itself new abilities, improve its own code, create unlimited copies of itself, choose better ways of deploying its computational resources. And it could even transform the environment on Earth or colonize other planets. The evolution of this new type of sentience could follow many paths. It could present a potential existential risk to humanity, depending on the nature and capabilities of the system. However, the hypothesis of a powerful machine taking over the world is not the only outcome. But there are really two sides to that. So one is getting rid of a lot of the negatives, that, like the compassionate use to cure diseases and all other kinds of horrible miseries that exist on the planet today. So that is a large chunk of the potential. But then beyond that, if one really wants to see what the positive things are that could be developed, I think one has to think outside the constraints of our current human biological nature. It's unrealistic to imagine a trajectory stretching hundreds of thousands of years into the future. We have super intelligence, we have material abundance, and yet we are still these bipedal organisms with three pounds of gray TC matter. All of these basic parameters that sort of define the human game today to come up for grabs in this future. 
Philosopher Nick Bostrom lays the foundation for understanding the future of humanity and intelligent life. Now imagine a machine, structurally similar to a brain, but with immense hardness and flexibility, designed from the bottom, scratch, to function as an intelligent agent. Given sufficiently long time, a machine like this could acquire enormous knowledge and skills, surpassing human intellectual capacity in virtually every field. At that point, the machine would have become super intelligent. With other words, the machine's intellectual capabilities would exceed those of all of humanity put together by a very large margin. This would represent the most radical change in the history of life on Earth. While the ultimate goals of superintelligences can vary greatly, a functional superintelligence will spontaneously generate as natural sub-goals such as self-preservation and goal content integrity, cognitive enhancement and resource acquisition. There are three overlapping revolutions that people talk about, GNR, genetics, biotech, nanotechnology and robotics, which is AI. There's a difference with AI in that there really isn't foolproof technical solution to this. You can have technical controls on, say, nanotechnology. One of the guidelines is it shouldn't be self-replicating. If you have an AI that's more intelligent than you and it's out for your destruction or it's out for the world's destruction and, and there's no other AI, but superior to it, that's a bad situation. According to Ray Kurzweil, this is a type of artificial intelligence system that acts like it has a mind, regardless of whether a philosopher would be able to determine if it actually has a mind or not. ASI is often associated with traits such as consciousness, sentience, sapience and self-awareness observed in living beings. However, these are not necessarily characteristics of an ASI, an ASI may be non-conscious to various degrees, even if it has some degree of consciousness. It could have a non-human nature, such as a radically different mental contents from a human mind. Kurzweil described an ASI as a machine that passes what he calls the Turing threshold, the point at which the machine's intelligence will be so far superior to people that any interaction between human and machine would raise the question of whether the machine is in control. AI can be widely available. The analogy to nuclear bomb is not exactly correct. It's not as though it's going to explode and create a mushroom cloud. It's more like if there were just a few people that had it, they would be able to be essentially dictators of Earth. Whoever acquired it, and if it was limited to a small number of people, and it was ultra smart, they would have dominion over Earth. So I think it's extremely important that it be widespread, then it would be tied to our consciousness, tied to our will, and everyone would have it, so it would be sort of still a relatively even playing field. In fact, it would be probably more egalitarian than today. It just really just comes down to the two things, and it's solving the machine brain bandwidth constraint and democratization of AI. I think if we have those two things, the future will be good. As long as AI power is, like anyone can get it if they want it, we've got something faster than meat sticks to communicate with, I think the future will be good. It is currently unknown what this kind of machine would become. Discussion of superintelligent AI focuses on several fundamental questions. How does one create minds that are better than humans? What are the possibilities to create a friendly ASI? There are several competing ways to get there, and many are not mutually exclusive. One of the first is to simply replicate the biological brain. It is not necessary to understand exactly how a brain works to replicate it digitally. However, a superintelligent AI will need to have the ability to learn. No brain can do that without a massive database of past experiences. In order to develop a superintelligence that would benefit humanity, the process has to be done in a series of steps, with each step being determined before we move to the next one. In fact, it might just be possible to program the AI to help us achieve the things we humans may not be able to do on our own. It's not simply being able to create them and learning how they've been commanded, but it is interacting with them and evolving ourselves at the same time. It is learning how to be human after the first ASI. Thanks for watching. Did you like this video? Then show your support by subscribing, ringing the bell, and enabling notifications to never miss videos like this.